most of the other places I've seen it, it you can't even get close enough or far enough away from it to get a good picture. Right. Is that far enough away? Yeah. It'll do. I'm not getting the whole thing in the screen, but that's all right. about seven feet of water in here and we draw seven feet. That's cutting it fairly close, isn't it? Yeah. And all these high and right. I think I want to write up. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna write up. I'm going to take the vacuum cleaner up with this vacuum the vacuum. Get that stuff up. We've got to do that. I can see a fairly good image. It's, who knows uh, how it'll turn out. We'll take it around the other side. radar and GPS and two of the uh, uh, the combustion controls plus the radios and, and all of that sort of stuff and uh, steering here and we can actually shift and run the throttle of the engine uh, with that rig. Is that being done presently? Yeah, yeah. there is a, a little misalignment in stop. I've got to uh, I've got to readjust it because it isn't stopping at exactly the right stop position. Engine doesn't seem to mind, but I'm not sure how critical it is. So you see, that sideboard is original, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. In the original mirror. And the bulkhead behind it. Mm -hmm. And oh, this little filial piece, piece up there, finial, whatever you call it, where the uh, mm -hmm. the thing goes through is original. But most of what you see is is new, including the table and chairs. Got an eight-berth forecastle forward, a little cabin on the port side and ahead, and a separate shower, fridge and freezer here. And uh, the, the owner likes to cook, so he's got it all set up for gourmet cooking, not for shipboard cooking. Mm -hmm. No fiddles around anything to hold the plates on and stuff like that. But, yeah, that'll be a hard shot with that right sunlight behind it. Well, it, it looks like a good image, yeah. but it's, who knows. Right. And, uh, Here we have the head. Oh, yeah. You get pictures of everything. Oh, yeah. We've got to cover all bases here. Yeah. This is nice. Yeah, they're, they're new fridges, and you can, you can get them doors will take any mm -hmm. any skin any skin you want on them so yeah, that's nice yeah 
generator's off right now. I forgot, so I probably shouldn't open it. This is your cabin? Yeah, don't take a picture of that. I oh, I wouldn't. <laughs> click, click, click. So, do you run CNG on this stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the ovens are electric. Mm -hmm. been around forever. In fact, I used to sail on the schooner that had the same brand, Aga, but it was coal-fired. Mm -hmm. Just a flat top with mm -hmm. the, with the, uh, uh, between the, between the drawers. Hardly even that. The DC and AC panels are in behind there for this end of the boat. Um, shelf. Fold it back up again. Not tricky. So you got different levels you can put it yeah. in. Yeah. And it's just shock cords and mm -hmm. there's a tube that keeps it aligned and you can gink it way out of line, but it doesn't seem to happen all that easily. Um, it works good. Yeah. And then in here Oh your chair. It's the captain's chair. <laughs> so Carpenter said you got to have big balls to run this boat. So, <laughs> got to place the fork on it. Yeah. <laughs> Steam out of there. Whoa! There she goes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always afraid if you're not used to this place, especially right here, mm -hmm. that's very dangerous. So the uh, all of the lines for air or steam atomization used to run under the deck plates, and we were having problems with uh, with a lot of water getting into the air mm -hmm. and the steam cooling off and a lot of condensation making the burner operate poorly. So we moved it all up and built this and I'm in the process of of lagging it up so that it'll all be a lot neater. But uh, the boiler is the same configuration as the original. You got a meter like this, so it's bigger. Oh yeah? Another one, uh, same company. I had that label was there, and then one day it was gone. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I had, I had those things plated because they were horrible, rusty mm -hmm. steel. So I gold plated them and then brushed them with a light black wash. To uh -huh. And somebody. And then the yeah the needle, the uh, meter I mean the uh, label just. Either popped off or somebody grabbed it. I don't know well, why. It popped off, it'd probably be down somewhere yeah, in the. But I haven't found it. That was a while ago. Mm -hmm. And I haven't found it. Mm -hmm. Too bad somebody would take it. Yeah. Some of it will get shown. Yeah. John York invention, because we, there were too many, too many variables in the thing. Mm -hmm. And finally it's set probably right where it was originally. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's all the way back. And, uh, I think I actually made it to go in further than the original did, so uh, it, uh, I don't know exactly yeah. where it would have been originally. You do have the original lever back yeah. there, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But see, I, we've got adjustments here and we've got adjustments here, and the thing was banging horribly. The, uh, the shuttle it, valve Take that would, sack off yeah. there, Ted. The whatever shuttle it is. valve would, would just crash into the, into the end of the cylinder on each, each side. And uh, finally, I, I got to look into, we've got a lot of these electronic readouts. Mm -hmm. And what used to be a 15-pound exhaust system sort of got taken out. This is what this is. That was a peep thing, and I don't know why he did it. So now all of the auxiliary exhaust goes directly to the condenser. And I can pull a pretty good vacuum. So my auxiliary exhaust is actually usually about five or six inches of mercury vacuum and by th throttling back the exhaust on this thing I can create a small back pressure mm -hmm. right here and the thing quiets right down. It, it wants it that likes vacuum. It there. Yeah, it doesn't like that vacuum. Mm -hmm. Do you suppose um, it could have been exhausting into the original 15 pound system? Well it, it, it does. Um, see it exhausts right here and this has now been divided into two legs that come into the condenser from two directions. Um, the, uh, 
fire bilge pump and the donkey pump and the circulating pump all go in that way and then this thing goes in this way and, they, and up here there was a back pressure regulator that, that held it at 15 pounds on one side and led off to vacuum the condenser from the other side. And uh, I don't know why they took it out, but it has thrown me off. What are these guys here? Those are uh, fin stabilizers. They keep the boat. Those are what I call training training wheels. You got the fin. Oh, I see. Yeah, so yeah. they'd stop the roll. And uh, in a reasonable sea, they take it up completely. But in a big sea, they don't take it up completely, but they stop the pendulum effect, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty quiet. It's not too bad. I'm, get, I'm getting a really noisy valve. Throws in this oil and water, salt water, all over the engine. So that's not. And I don't good. need to run it very fast to get the cooling that I need. So at lower speeds, it, it rumbles, and I, I do have to take that valve apart. I, I never had that pump apart. I wonder if maybe the valve spool might be loose on the valve rod. Well, possible. I need to get into it. Right now, things if things are off, um, well, I think it's a the side shaft was uh, was a Harishoff invention, maybe even sooner earlier than that. But it's a nice, simple engine, and it runs well. I've got almost all the knocks out of it. I've taken all of these shims out of the, mm -hmm. out of the uh, wrist pins. Mm -hmm. And I just took these out of the, uh, the forward journal. Um, and there's a couple of others that I've taken from other places. Because all of the Babbitts were essentially new. And, uh, well, you got to break in a little gotta bit. Break in a little bit. And that's in addition to all of the shims that Dennis and I went down and took out. Yeah. In the upper end, that is. Well, I think these are, those are these. Yeah. A bunch of them. These yeah. Things. Well, Pete put a bunch of shims in it originally because right. he thought things might be too tight, as I recall. Yeah. Well, five thousandths in there and seven thousandths in the others um, seems to be okay. Nothing is moving and nothing's overheating. If I ever have to take one out here, I think you made this, this shim, this washer under this bolt here, because this, uh, I don't know what you call it, this bearing cap, has got, yeah, but that, where the bolt goes through is cracked, Oh. so this this is supporting that, so I really can't do much, No. unless you're, you're you should file a, file a, file a or yeah. maybe you should face that washer off and make some shims that can right. be taken out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Really, so what ought to be to, done is yeah. is to get a new casting made for that cap and right start all over again. Yeah, to be really ship shape. Or stitch it together. Um, what are you doing for oiling the uh, thrust bearing? Uh, uh, so far, it's by hand, but I've got a I've got a choice here. I just found this one for twenty five bucks in the flea market, uh, but the uh, the pins, the needle valves are uh, seized, the little part that goes up in the spring in there, oh, yeah. I, I can't get them to, to clear. They've been soaking in WD-40 for a couple of weeks and I can't get them to go. So the alternative, if I can't do that... I do it, have a Manzel, you know. I, if, you do have one? Yes, I do. Um, I When we were talking about it before, I looked through all my junk and I took... Yeah one apart, or took two apart and made one out of two, and I think it's a seven lead. Good Lord, yeah, we only need six. I well, have a single. We, we all, could very yeah. easily, you right. know, shunt one of the uh, yeah. leads. Um, I also have this. Mm -hmm. which, um, could have a lot, bunch more yeah. well, there's, there's risers a, out of it. There's a pair, oh. and they fit, they're, they're made for the thrust bearing. Um, okay. But we didn't put them in. And we haven't put this one either because we still don't know where to hang the damn thing. Mm -hmm. um, it'll probably end up under the ladder. What it, whatever it is, if it's a Manzel or if it's a drip oiler, um, we'll have to make a bracket here and then run the pipes back in here. Um, wow. And into here. See, there's no clearance right? Uh, no, unless we build a box have. over it, but then the box has to go all the way like three inches after the lamp. Yeah, you probably should so. put the lubricator remotely at any rate and just, uh, and then just some little inside. elbows down there and yeah. tubing. But it's not it's not bad. Uh, I've been uh, 
oiling it at longer and longer intervals to see how long it takes before it begins to warm up. And so far, uh, even an hour without a squirt of oil, it hasn't, it mm. hasn't started Good. heating. So, Good. So uh, it's pretty even. Four of them are for a head and two are for a stern. And um, they actually, most of them are double-faced, so they, uh, I'm not sure whether that was because you could use one horseshoe for both directions or you could take it out and turn it around if it, mm -hmm. if it wears, either mm -hmm. way. Um, but there's, there's a lot of, lot of surface there and it's new Babbitt um, and it seems to work. And I just realized I never took the wicks out and there's no oil in there. It's all in the bilges. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, by the way, I found you some genuine curled horse hair. Oh yeah? Yep, I got a bunch <laughs> of it. I, I had forgotten about it. Oh, I don't know, probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes deep to warm it. And uh, once I've once I can't see through the engine because of the drains making so much steam that uh, nothing is going back to water, then I know that it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. But then I have to shut them down because I can't even see the crank turning. <laughs> Fill this whole engine. Probably don't, well, shouldn't say, but I don't imagine back there you get very many of those. No, I've been working on a Brunwald. I go as engineer on an old boat that has a two-cylinder boat. It's an interesting place. They've got uh, this sort of ring lagoon inside and then a levee inside of that. Huh. And uh, this whole great big campground with uh, all sorts of buildings and an old lighthouse. You can just see the cupola on the lighthouse there. It's not high enough to oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah. And that came off from some shoal somewhere. <laughs> the whole place is serviced by water? Yep. No room. No room to it. We run a, so I'm not sure where the landing is, but so is it difficult to find your way over here? No, um, we talked to somebody at the marina and looked at a map, and it looked like the only way to get over here was to go over to Highway Five, and then off this eight mile road and down the levee and uh, you couldn't really tell by looking at any of the maps uh, whether it was going to work or not or where we were going to end up even. Right. But uh, we there were is, successful. There's a, uh, four cabins down here and two heads. Oh yes, it's nice down here. Is there any AC on board? Yeah, yep. We're uh, probably going to change it out a lot because most of the motors are single phase and, and depending on what's going on we get way out of balance oh. the generator. So they're probably going to change everything out to, to uh, three phase. Nice detailing up here on the mm -hmm. overhead. I don't know why the water pump just came on. I'm so afraid to use water. I mean, I can make 50 gallons an hour. Close the head. Watch the heads or anything. We have a little cabin here. cabin. So these are guest cabins, mm -hmm. I assume. Yep. Yeah, that after cabin, that's oh. head. Okay. Which is and sweet. The forward cabin as well. The tub. Mm-hmm. And yes, gotta show the little nice little cute tub there. Well this is the 
master bedroom more yeah. or less. Yeah, this is the owner's cabin. Glad to see he makes his bed as well as I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got a weak board here or something. Oh, oh yeah, there's uh, something there. There's misalignment in the. Uh, something was weak. Yeah, it's not lined up. There's a there's a deck beam right here. Uh, we make potable water from from seawater, and then we take the potable water and run it through a different system to make boiler water. So. Hmm. Oh, I think they're here. I think they're here. I know. Steve, where'd you put the camera? Right there. Awesome. Uh, How long are they serving lunch? Do you know? Uh, it's it's going. Well, let's see. You better you better hustle a little bit. Okay. All right. Yeah. You'll be able to get something. Oh, this okay. is all this shirt stuff. For the cruise, I was wondering why so many boats had uh, were wearing red shirts for their. <laughs> yeah, 